Good morning, good morning, good morning, everybody. God bless you. You all look great. Thanks for coming. Church days affect the rest of your days. Did you know that? You made a wise decision to put God at the front end of your week, make him important in your life. He, you know what? He wants to be first. He's the only one who can want to be first and not be arrogant because he's perfect. You know, we want to be, you know, first, and sometimes it's just ego, but God, God has no ego. He's perfect, and when he wants us to worship him, it's because you become like what you worship, and he wants us to become like him because he's perfect. We don't worship stuff because it's all, did you know the, Bi the Bible says there's some things that God can't do? Did you know that? Yeah. It says he can't lie. Amen. It says he can't deny himself, and he can't change. You say, well, he wants us to change. Yeah, but he can't change because he's already perfect. So how could he change? It would be down. He can't go up. He can't get more. That's the God that we serve. He's a perfect God. And coming to church recognizes his perfection, our imperfection, and we come to humble ourselves and come before him. Amen? Amen. I'm glad you're here. I'm glad I'm here. I'm especially glad the Holy Spirit is here. Before we get into our message, I wanted to uh, just thank everybody that worked so hard on Easter. Uh, it was a great service. Uh, how many of you are here today? Last week was your first time coming to church. You came for Easter. And uh, look at people have come back. Come on, somebody. <laughs> thank you for coming. And it was our prayer for you to come. And it's our prayer for you to continue to come back. Because, you know, God's not a once a year thing. God's at every day, every moment of every day. I mean, we need God in this life. But I just wanted to thank, you know, people worked hard on Easter. They came early. They stayed late. They came during the week. The water heater broke on Tuesday. People came and mopped it up. You know, the devil didn't want us to meet, but we met. And I just want to brag on you guys because I was sharing with you. This is an opportunity to invite people that probably, you know, won't go to church during the year, but they'll go on Easter, and let's take advantage of it. And you all did it, because last week we had 25 first-time guests. That's a lot. And listen to this. Of those 25, 12 of them prayed to receive Christ as Lord and Savior last week. Man, that, that's, that's what it's all about. That's pretty much all I want to do for the rest of my life. When I was younger, I was like, oh, someday oh, I'll go live in the Bahamas or have, be, have, be, live on the beach. or have, you know. I was like, you know what? I don't know how many days I got left, but I don't want to waste one sitting on the beach. I want to win souls, make disciples. There'll be time to get that Heaven is my retire. I want to spend eternity. But you know what? Every day is an opportunity to lead someone to Jesus, help somebody know God, bless somebody, pray for somebody. We went out on campus Friday, prayed with some people. I got to share with this young man, never been to church, but he said he wanted to know God. Amen. Do you know God's moving? God's moving. God's moving on the earth, but he's moving through us, and we got to be ready to do that. Amen. Thank you for working so hard on Easter, but you know what? Every day is an opportunity to lead somebody to Jesus. God's moving on the planet, and that's what I want to talk about today, the blessed life part six. Let's pray. God, speak to us today. We want to hear your voice. We want to change. We want to be more like you. We're not, we're not like you. We're not perfect. But we want to be more like you this week than last week. Speak to us today. My prayer, Lord God, is that you will take, put your words in my mouth and take them from my mouth to each of our hearts to hear what we need. I believe everybody's going to receive something supernatural today in Jesus' name. Everybody said, Amen. Amen. So if we look around in the world around us, this is part six, and I've been, I've been laying a case biblically about this blessed life and what it means. In the Garden of Eden, he said there's, you can eat any tree. God, God, you know, God gives you free will. That's where sin comes from. That's how the planet is so messed up because he, he wants us to love him freely. He wants us to love him. Why did God make man? He wanted to share his love with beings that would love him in return freely. So if it's free, that means you have to have the ability to reject him when you like, if you reject light, you get darkness, right? If you let, reject God, you get evil, because God is good, perfectly good. There's no evil in him. So when we reject him, so that was why he put that tree in the garden 
the knowledge of good and evil, because they already had all the good stuff. Yeah. It was paradise. It was the Garden of Eden. They had all the good stuff, but he wanted them to love him freely. Same thing with me and you. He wants you to love him freely, so he gives you the free choice to do the other the side of the tree. So it was the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, and we built a case, and if you missed the first five messages, you can watch them on the website. Scripturally, what he said the knowledge of good and evil, and we see scripturally that there are things connected to the good and there are things connected to the evil, such as on the good side, you got life, blessing, prosperity, and other things that we might add to it later, peace, joy, <laughs> love. And on the evil side, we see from scriptures, there's death, there's curse, and there's adversity. And he gives us the freedom to choose you have freedom of choice, but not freedom of consequence. When you choose evil, you get these consequences. Yeah. Well, why am I getting all this crud? Let's go back and see what kind of choices and decisions we're making in life. That's the case that we're building. And then I've talked about how that when man sinned in the garden, as soon as he sinned and ate from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, he came to man and he said, cursed is the ground because of you. From the sweat of your brow you shall eat. And then when Cain killed Abel. He said that your brother's blood brought a curse on the ground. Think of how many sins, murders, rapes, evil have happened in the last 6,000 years. Each one brings a curse on the planet. So we have this thing called the global curse, the curse. Sin, 8 billion people on the planet. Every sin is weighing. The Bible says the earth groans under the weight of sin, and it's longing for its redemption. It's longing for its freedom. It's crying out for cleansing of the sin, and it's going to happen. But we live on a cursed planet. So there's the global curse, but then there's the personal curse. When we make bad decisions, we, we get this curse on our life. And the Bible says it's passed down to three and four generations. So we've come into the earth and you, like I had a, a spirit of anger on me. It was passed down, generational curse. But the good news is you can break any curse that's been handed down to you. Alcoholism, drug addiction, anger, fear, you, depression, anxiety, discouragement, the curses that get passed down from generation and they get bigger and stronger. Any point in time, one person can stand up and say, no more, Mr. Devil, no more curse. I'm breaking the curse off of me. Get off of me. Get off of my children. I'm not passing it down anymore. I break this curse right now in Jesus' name. Amen. So there's the global curse that there's a personal curse. And then there's something called the blessing. So in order to prosper on the earth, you need the blessing because otherwise the global curse will get you down. The problem is you get the global curse and then you have the personal curse and the two work together exponentially and life becomes overwhelming. So you have to get the blessing, get rid of the curse off of your life, get the blessing working in your life so that you can overcome the, the curse won't go away, but it won't overcome you. You will overcome it. That's why you need to live the blessed life. The blessed life gives you the power over the global curse. It won't go away. It won't leave the planet. It just won't affect you like it's affecting everybody else. It won't affect you this year the way it did last year. I broke that curse of anger. I said, no more. I'm not going to raise my kids with the anger that I was raised in. I'm breaking that curse, and I'm changing it into a blessing, and I'm going to speak blessing over my kids we cannot pass down the sins of our fathers to our children that's the default setting in fact you'll get worse it will multiply it will get worse and you've got to wake up and stand up and realize it and own it and get rid of the curse and walk into the blessing and that's what I'm talking about and that's what this series is all about walking into the blessing of God and I got a very important thing to share with you today that enables you to receive the blessing we're going to get there all right as we look at the earth and we see the wicked are becoming more wicked, governments and systems of this world have set themselves up against God. People in general resist God, but God's raising up an army of lovers that love him, that love themselves, and love the world. That's right. He's gathering his family, and we must be about the Father's business I don't know why he entrusted the preaching of the gospel and the loving of people to men and women like me and you. It seems like he could find something more 
consistent, more faithful, like maybe a donkey or maybe a rock or maybe the angels, but he wants to use me and you. That's an awesome thing. He has faith in you. He has trust in you. He wants to use people, and that's where you find fulfillment in life is when you give your life to God and let him use you the way he designed you to fulfill his destiny. There is no satisfaction in life like the satisfaction of seeing God speak his word through you and loving people through you. Mm, there's nothing like it. He's gathering his family, and we must be about the Father's business. To do that, you have to be bold, but you also have to be blessed. Don't just get down and, oh, well, I don't want to be blessed. You know, I'm just, it's okay to suffer. No, he wants you to be blessed to be a blessing. He, you need to be blessed because you can't, you can't be just fighting the curse your whole life. You got to overcome the curse so you can help somebody else get out from under the curse. Yes. He's looking for people that he can bless to be a blessing, that not, not all just about themselves and just selfish, but they've got their needs met and they have enough left over to be a blessing to somebody else. That's the church. That's the kingdom of God. That's the people of God. We have an onus. We have a responsibility. We have a call. You have a destiny. It's to fulfill. You say, yo, but I'm a doctor. I'm a lawyer. I'm a carpenter. I'm a truck driver. That's where you minister. That's the people that God's put in your life. That's the opportunities that you have every day to share the gospel with people that don't go to church, that don't watch Christian television or listen to Christian radio. You're the only gospel that they'll hear. And you have to preach so loud like Augustine said, St. Augustine said, preach the gospel always and if necessary use words your life is a gospel message you're living a gospel message and when they ask you what makes you so happy and joyful you say i broke the curse off of my life and i can help you break the curse off of your life i've come into relationship with god hallelujah and i want you to have a relationship with god we went out on campus friday and we were wearing the baptism shirts it says i have decided and a lady walked up to me and said, what have you decided? And I said, I decided to quit doing drugs and getting drunk and living for myself. I decided to give my life to Christ and to live every day for him. She said, hallelujah, me too. I have decided. How about you? Glory to God. Yeah, we need to be blessed and we need to be free from the curse. The word blessed is important to God. It occurs 856 times in the Bible. That's more than heaven and hell. The word heaven and hell combined. The word curse is in 269. So he's telling us, break the curse, get into the blessing. The tree was a choice. Blessing or curse. Every day, but every day we choose. Come on. Blessing or curse. It's not a one-time decision. Because if it was a one-time decision, I'd say, how many want the blessing? Everybody would raise their hand. How many want the curse? Nobody would raise their hand. No. It's not like that. It's our habits. And you could go back to the earlier one. I gave you seven ways that you can get into the curse and seven ways to get into the blessing. Habits make a decision. Thoughts, words, our association, what you do on Sunday, whether you read the Bible, whether you pray. These are the decisions that we make 24-7 throughout our life that determine which side. Not a one-time raise your hand. Nobody's going to pick that side. Nobody with any intelligence would pick this side. But we don't realize how sometimes we don't want this side, but we pick it because we make some bad decisions. So what I want to talk to us about today. Mm -hmm. The earth is under curse. It's only going to get worse. All right, don't be dismayed. He said it'd be like birth pangs. Birth pangs get stronger and more frequent until the delivery. The curse is going to get stronger. He said there's going to be famines. There's going to be earthquakes, two big earthquakes in the past week. I did a chart one time on earthquakes, and you go back 100 years or 1,000 years, and you see it's almost flat, and then you see 1900 starts to go up. 1948, Israel became a nation. It starts going up. 1967, Jerusalem was given back to the Jews, and you see prophetic 2000. You see now the curve is just like this earthquakes one of just just one of the signs evil men's hearts failing them for fear sickness disease calamities uh, pestilence worldwide curses epidemics we see it all happening so we see that happening is and it's getting worse so you need to be under the blessing to for two things to protect you and to propel you because the world's trying to kill you and it's trying to hold you back. The blessing 
covers you and protects you and propels you forward. The only safe place on the earth right now is under the shadow of his wings. Amen. Psalm 91. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. That's where I want to be. I don't know about you. I, I want to, nobody can protect me. No government, no power, no people, no group. You know, the, but God will protect you no matter where you go. There's no place where he can't get into to protect you. He will. That's the blessed life. Now, how do I live the blessed life? Now, watch this. Your belief determines where you will spend eternity. But your behavior determines how you will spend eternity. Your belief determines where. So salvation is by faith. With the heart, man believeth unto righteousness, right? And we think, oh, that's the end. I believe in Jesus. No, now it falls over into my behavior determines how I will spend eternity. And eternity starts right now. So our behavior has to line up with the word of God now if I want to start getting these kind of results in my life. Thank God when we go to heaven, we won't face any of this. Yeah. But how, wanna, how many of you want to get this stuff now, not wait till you get to heaven and bring some people with you? So if you're always living over here, you can't help anybody else because you're just struggling just to get along. So you got to get over on this side where we can be a blessing to the world. That's, the, that's what the church is. Jesus said, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. How? Because as you continue to walk with God, you keep changing your behavior and you keep getting this stuff over here. And now I can share it with other people and people become, hey, how would, yeah, yeah let me share with you. Come to church with me. Start living your best life now. Yeah, start now. Not free from problems but victorious over your problems, that ultimately you get the victory over it. Having problems is a sign that you're alive on planet Earth. <laughs> but we shouldn't just give in to those things and say, oh, well, th this thing's going to beat me down. No, no, you rise up in your spirit and say, no, I'm going to beat this thing down. And one plus God makes a majority. I can run through a troop and leap over a wall. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. The righteous are bold as a lion. The wicked flee when no man pursue it. I'm going to overcome this thing. Whatever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. Victorious over the curse, helping others get free from their curses. The more you believe, the more you receive. The more you believe, the more you obey. The more you obey, the more you get blessed. Woo! Obedience is changed behaviors. I need to change. Did Rebecca say amen? Oh, she raised her hand when I said that. She said, oh, yeah, you need to change. <laughs> you know, all of us need to change because we're not God. God doesn't need to change. He can't change because he's perfect. I'm not perfect, so I need to change. Or I can just acquiesce and say, oh, that's just me. That's the, hey, you don't know. I've got plenty of reasons why. Yeah, you've got plenty of reasons why you're such a mess. Don't stay there. Let's, start, let's don't stay there and use it as an excuse. Well, you know, I had a rough upbringing. Come on. Welcome to the club. We all had a rough <laughs> upbringing. Come on. We didn't have a perfect beginning, a perfect life. The world's been trying to destroy you. The devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And he's, Jesus said in John 14, he's the ruler of this earth. You've been on the earth. You've been beat up. You've been betrayed. You've been lied to. You've been backstabbed. Bad things have happened to you. Come on, get over it. Let's get up and defeat it, change it, break the curse, and move forward in the blessing of God. Don't use as an excuse for bad behavior. If you're a Christian, you don't have to keep living in the bad behavior and repeating the mistakes of the past. You change. I don't get drunk every night like I used to. I change. I don't do drugs like I used to. I change. I had to make some decisions. I get up every morning and seek God. You got to make some quality decisions in your life. I need to change. And you know what? If nothing changes, guess what? Nothing changes. Psalm 1, I'm going to read the whole psalm to you. You can follow along here. Psalm 1, watch this, the beginning of the psalms. You know, all of the psalms teach you how to be blessed. Amen. Watch this, beginning. Psalm 1, watch this, second word. What is it? How what? Blessed. blessed. Why? God wants you to be blessed. He wants you to live a blessed life. He wants you to be happy. 
Blessed means to be made happy, prosperous, fortunate, impossible to curse. That's what God wants. He wants you to be blessed. But you're going to see in this passage, it's not just all up to God. It's up to me. I got to make decisions. I got to change behaviors. I got to take action. There's things, watch this in this, right here in the first verse. How blessed is the man or woman, mankind here. How blessed is the man. He, he, he does three things on purpose, intentionally. He does not walk. He, 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 do, he do, doesn't do three things. And you're going to see he does some things. He makes decisions. He does not walk in the counsel of the wicked. There's plenty of wicked counsel out there. Don't walk in it. It's on TikTok. It's on Facebook. It's on the news. It's in your neighbor's mouth. It's in your coworker at the water fountain. There's lots of wicked counsel. Reject it. Don't listen to it. Don't go looking for it. Don't accept it. Cast it off. He does not walk in the council. Now, who controls your feet where you walk? You do. Not God. He doesn't walk in the council of the wicked. When or stand, watch where you stand. Watch who you stand with. Watch who's standing with you. He doesn't st stand in the path of sinners. After I got saved, uh, we go, we worked at the Miami Sea Cram. We get done with work. We've been, you know, usually smoke pot all day. I might be one of the few people that's ever smoked pot underwater and put on my diving helmet and put a joint in my mouth and go down and feed the fish. Oh and that was... A <laughs> 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 You'd be surprised. I, I love to feed the fish. We'd smoke pot all day, and then we'd go sit on the dock of the bay and drink some beers and smoke some more joints and decide where were we going to spend the night. Then you go home and take a shower and come back. We'd meet up about 10 p.m. at some club or some part of town. We'd do drugs and drink and get in, until they closed the place, and then we'd go find some place to eat and get up the next day and start all over again. And then the Lord visited me, and the, and the next day I didn't, didn't smoke the joint underwater again today I decided I was going to live for God and I told him I said I'll never do drugs again I'll never get drunk again that was 49 and a half years ago I've never done drugs I've never been drunk since that night changed my life I changed my ways and uh, where you stand it doesn't stand in the path of sinners so after work instead of go sitting there and drinking beer and planning the night I said I got to go guys so I had to change where I stand I changed where I sit and change where I walk and I went home. I didn't know what I was going to do because I was used to getting drunk every night and doing drugs every day. And this was new to me. And I went home and I sat on the couch in my living room in the dark by myself in my house. And I felt such a joy and such a peace. I'd never felt my whole life. And tears were coming down my face because I, I was amazed. I didn't understand why I felt a peace I'd never felt before. I felt the joy I never got from a bottle or a pill. And I was sitting there and I said, I'm sitting here in my house by myself. Why do I feel joy and peace? And I know now it was the Holy Spirit. He'll give you a peace. He'll give you a joy. And I've never gone back to the bottle. I've never gone back to the pill. But yeah, you got to don't walk in the counsel of the wicked nor stand in the path of sinners. You got to change the way you walk and where you stand and where you sit. You got to hang out. You got to get some new friends. You got to get some new people. Not because I hated them, because I hated my sin and I didn't want to go back to it. Nor stand in the path of sinners. Nor sit in the seat of the scoffers. Now, today, everybody's a scoffer. Everybody's an expert. Everybody's got something negative to say. Don't sit in that seat. Don't become that expert. People, even experts in the church, criticizing everybody else. Well, he, I'm, oh, wow, well, he, I'm, I'm, I'm. don't do that. No, it'll take away your blessing. You don't want to be that guy. You don't want to be that person judging everybody. No, 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 no. Leave that to the devil. And what does he do? He didn't do three things, but like, watch this next verse. But his delight... What do you delight in? What do you delight in? Getting high? Being mean? Getting revenge? Well, watch this. His delight is what? In the law of the Lord. That'll give you peace. That'll give you joy. That'll give you wisdom. That'll give you strength. His delight. He's made some decisions. Who he's not going to hang around with and who he's going to hang around with. He's going to hang around with Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, the disciples, with Jesus. He's going to hang around with godly people, imperfect godly people that are seeking the same thing he is. His delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law, he meditates once a month. Once a month, he meditates. 
Are you reading that with me? Is that what it says? His, uh, in, the, in his law, he meditates. Wait a minute. It doesn't say once a month there. It says once a week. Once a week, he'll meditate in the Word of God. He'll come on Sunday, and Pastor Bill will give him something to meditate on. No, what does it say? Day and night. That ain't me being with you. I can't be with you day and night. That means you got to do it yourself. you got to open the Bible yourself. you got to meditate on the Word yourself. When? Day and night. Mm-hmm. And what happens to that person? What happens to that person? Here's what happens. He'll be like a tree firmly planted by streams of water. You ever seen a tree growing by the river next to the water where it's getting water and it gets strong? That's you. That's you. But you got to make decisions. It's based on your behavior. You make the right decisions. You'll be like a tree planted by rivers of water, which yields its fruit. You know, we're supposed to bear fruit. That's right. Bears its fruit. We're supposed to bear fruit. That means we reproduce ourselves. We talk to people. We share the gospel. We bring them on Easter and good things happen. It bears fruit in its season. That's you. And watch this. His leaf does not wither. You can tell the health of a tree by looking at the leaf. That means you're healthy. You're strong. You're growing. You're vibrant. You don't have a canker worm eating in and from you inside. You've got rid of all that stuff and you're healthy. Amen. And whatever he does. He's poor, big, but at least he's saved, but he's poor. He's lay, he, he, you know, he's defeated. He lives in poverty. Is that what it says? Hey, be careful about criticizing people who prosper because the blessed man, what does he do? He prospers. That's God's plan for your life. He wants you to prosper. That's right. Shake off those lies of the devil. The devil wants you poor. God wants you blessed to be a blessing. Next verse, the wicked are not so, but they're like chaff lightweight blow they get blown off which the wind drives away therefore the wicked will not stand in the judgment Ooh, i don't know about you but i want to stand nor sinners in the assembly of the righteous for the lord knows the way of the righteous but the way of the wicked will perish so the choice is prosper or perish and it's all based on where you stand where you sit what you do who you hang around with your decisions start making better decisions start making better decisions hang around with better people Show me your, your friends, I'll show you your future. How do we become blessed? The blessed man or woman, he does certain things and he doesn't do certain things. To change what you receive from God this year, you have to change what you believe and you have to change your behaviors. You have to line up with God's word and line up with God's will. Matthew 7, Jesus said, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. Not everyone who who uh, sings on Sunday, goes to heaven. Oh, th this is a strong verse right here. Uh, I'm not trying to put you down or make you afraid. I'm just saying we got to watch our, we got to get the whole package here. It says not everyone that has a Christian bumper sticker and wears Christian pajamas to bed at night, it will go to heaven. But who, but he who what? Does the will of my father. He makes some decisions. You make your, it's your behavior. You got to do the will of the father, not your own will and ask God to bless your will. Oh, don't shout me down now. I got real quiet right there. Oh, yeah, because a lot of us, we got our plans for our life. And why does, doggone it, why isn't God, <coughs> God blessing my plans? Because he's got a different plan. He who does the will of my Father who's in heaven will enter. So your mission for this week, I got an assignment for you, is to walk in the fear of the Lord. Now, when I say that, I've had people on campus say, I don't understand Christianity. You say you're supposed to love God and you're supposed to fear God. So it's an unfortunate translation of the word. As you know, the Greek and the Hebrew have about three times as many words as the English. So like, for instance, in the, in the Greek language, there's 14 words that we translate love. One word, 14, and they fall in four categories, so it can be very confusing. And I think what has transpired in, in the evolution of etymology of the word fear that fear now, if I say fear, you think of terror, fright, fear of spiders, fear of heights. So when I say the fear of the Lord, we think, oh, I'm supposed to be, you know, fright. But that's not what the word means, so we got to investigate that. A better translation would be a reverential awe and respect. So it has nothing to do with fright or terror. So the Bible says, we're going to see this verse, that the key to entering into the blessed life is the fear of the Lord. And we've got to understand what that means, because that's what he wants us to do. Psalm 34, verse 8 says this, O taste and see that the Lord is good. How blessed is the man who takes refuge, refuge in him. Next verse, O fear the Lord. Yeah. Bless, fear the Lord. Fear the Lord, get blessed. So we've got to understand the fear of the Lord. 
Fear the Lord, you his saints, for to those who fear him, there is no want. Uh, it's unfortunate, again, translation, because we don't use want like the old English. It means lack. The word there in the Hebrew is haser, to lack, to be without. Uh, for the, those who fear him, there is no lack. So we see that's part of the blessing. Next verse, young lions lack. And, oh, the young lion, he's the most powerful being in the, in the jungle, right? But with relying on their strength, they could lack. And that's why he's saying, don't rely on your strength. You see, the young lions lack, but they who seek the Lord shall not lack any good thing. That's the blessing of the Lord. Next verse, come you children, listen to me, and I will teach you the fear of the Lord. So as we have to be taught the fear of the Lord, and we need to teach our children the fear of the Lord. Not to be afraid of God, but to have a reverential respect and awe of God. I think that's one of the best things that I got from my Catholic upbringing was a respect for God. That's a good thing. I'll teach you the fear of the Lord. Who's the man who desires life and love length of days that he may see good? He has to understand the fear of the Lord. So what is the fear of the Lord? All right. It has nothing to do with fright or terror and everything to do with respect Honor, reverence, obedience, hating evil. Now, here's the definition. I'm going to put a full slide uh, view up here for you. And this is taken from Webster's 1828 Dictionary um, because it breaks it out. So here, let, let's, let's look at it here. So it talks about fear and how d different aspects of fear, how men fear this and men fear that. And then it says this, in good men... So the fear of God is different in good men than it is in evil men. In evil men, it might be fright. It might be terror, but not in good men. Not in people that have accepted Christ. We're not afraid of him. He paid my price. He took, he took my place. He took away my sins. I have, no, I have no fright. I'm not afraid to get into his presence. But it looks like this. In good men, the fear of God is a holy awe. Ooh, if you just had to, it's a holy awe. We need to teach that to our children. Holy awe. Don't take his name in vain. Holy awe of God and of his laws. So we respect his laws because they're an extension of him. He's teaching us of his laws, which springs from a just view and the real love of the divine character. The more you love him, the more you respect him, the more you obey his laws. Leading the subjects of it, say that's me, leading the subjects of it to what do we do? Hate and shun everything that can offend such a holy being and inclining them to aim at perfect obedience. Now, I put that full slide. You might want to take a picture of that and study that this week. Take a picture of it, hang it, because probably you, you might not have a Webster's 1828, and if you buy a new Webster's, it won't be in there. But you can take a picture of that. I have this written in the front cover of all my Bibles because it's so important to realize this. And we're going to take that slide down and we're just going to take this apart because we need to live in a holy awe. We need to have reverence. Don't use his name in vain. Teach your children. Reverence God. Show God some respect because he's God. He's God. He's holy. He's perfect. Hmm. Honor God. How do you do that? You, well, you're doing it today by coming to church. Yeah. See, you disrespect God when you don't obey his can. He says, one day out of seven, that's holy unto me. Bring it to God. Give it to God. Uh, the vast majority of people in Alachua County, see, they're, they're not living in the fear of the Lord. They're disrespecting God. Even Christians, even some Christians, oh, I don't need, need to go to church. Yeah, you do. Because it's part of God's plan. It's, it's where your health is. It's where your strength is. It says we come together to encourage one another, to strengthen one another. You need strength to go through the curse. You need people standing with you. Uh, pray over your meals. Have family prayer times when you're raising your kids. Let, let them sh show them that. And I think if anything showed me a reverence for God was my, my dad. He was a workaholic. He, he grew up in the Great Depression and went through World War II. He, he started working in the coal mines when he was five, and he loved to work, but we didn't work on Sundays. We went to church, and I knew that was important to me as a child. He led the way. He demonstrated a reverential respect for God. He never used God's name in vain. 
He wasn't a perfect man. He made a lot of mistakes, but he did some things right that I want to pass on and we can pass on to our children. A holy awe. And daddy gets up and he says, we're going to church. And you say, I don't want to go to church. Tough luck. Get up. Get dressed. We're going to church. Because I'm leading the way. I'm leading the way. I'm showing a reverential respect for God. The fear of the Lord, it needs to be, and all that love for God and of his laws. And you hate sin and you hate evil, not just out there in the world, but in here inside of me. I hate when I have evil thoughts and evil desires. I hate it, and I go to God, help me. What does it mean to have the fear of the Lord? It means to put God first. Yeah, put him first in your week. Put him first in your day. Put him first in your thoughts. Put him first in your dreams. Put him first, how about this, in your plans? Hey, you got big plans? I know people talk, hey, you got big plans, dreams, goals. That's great. What about God's dreams, plans, and goals? Are they more important than mine? Or does God have to take a back seat to my plans and line up with my desires? Didn't that make me God? Don't I need to take my desires and make them take a back seat to God's plan, what he wants for my life? Put God first in your dreams, in your plans. Here's a tough one. Put him first in your money. Does he really have my heart? Not if he can't get the first tenth of my money like he commands. Something's wrong. Something's wrong with my heart. That was the difference between Cain and Abel. Cain must have been, he was, he was a bad guy. I know he was evil because he killed his brother. When there was just not that many people on the earth, his brother, he killed him. He killed him. But what gives us clue to that, see, he, he would not put God first in his money. That was the difference between Cain and Abel. They brought their tithe, the Bible says, and Abel, it says, brought the first of his crop, his, his produce, the fir first of his herd. And it said, Cain, over the course of in the course of time, brought it to God. He didn't bring the first. So you see right there, God didn't have his heart. And that's... Evidence to me and every one of us, if, if God can't, if we can't give God the first of our money, he doesn't really have our heart. We got a problem. And only I can change that. And so we put God first in everything. It's a big test. First in your money, first in your self-help, first in your work. In your refreshing, like when you take time to refresh and recharge and go on vacation, put God first in that. Don't put him in the back. In your, when you relax, put God first. I love to take a break and just sit in a chair and look at the trees and I just think about, think about God. Don't worship the trees. There's something bigger than the trees that made the trees. There's something bigger than the sunset that made the sunset. It's God. In the meaning of life, the fear of the Lord is to lift him up continually, all day, every day. God's always been God and will always be God. He created you and he loves you. He wants to bless you, but he gave us free will. So our belief and our behavior determine whether God can bless us or the devil can curse us. We have to choose. Choose wisely. Joshua 24, Joshua said to his, his people, he said, if it's disagreeable you in your sight to serve the Lord, and it is, a lot of people, it's disagreeable. I don't want to serve the Lord. I want to run my own life. That's what keeps people out of the kingdom. I understand that. You want to run your own life. And God says, well, that's, that's it. Go ahead. Then you're God. Right? Then you have to save yourself, but you can't save yourself. But what did he say? Choose for yourselves today whom you will serve. And that's true every day. Choose every day. Choose whom you will serve. Whether the gods which are your fathers serve, which were beyond the river, the gods of the Amorites in whose land you're living. You want to serve the, the gods of the culture? It's out there. Yeah, they're trying to tell you, serve this. Serve yourself. Yeah? And he said this, but as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. And you got to make up your mind and make that decision. Me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. Here's God's desire for us. We see it in Malachi. He wants to bless us. And here again, we, we come back to, does he have our heart? He says, bring the whole tithe. That's a tenth, the first tenth of our income or increase. So if we can't give that to him, then he's saying we got a heart problem. Bring it into the storehouse so that there may be food in the house. So he tells us where to bring it and what it's supposed to do. Bring food in the house. Now, the house of God doesn't, you know, make hamburgers and fried chicken. Our food is the word of God. To eat the word of God. We share the word of God. That there may be food in my house. And test me now in this, says the Lord of hosts. What happens when we do this? If I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out for you a blessing till it overflows. That's what God wants to do. 
but he has to have our heart. So what's his desire? Overflow blessing, but that's not just it. So we're talking about what the blessing and the curse, overflow blessing. And the next one says, then I will rebuke the devourer. Who's the devourer? He's the one that wants to steal, kill, and destroy. You need someone in your corner fighting for you, rebuking the devil, rebuking the curse, rebuking the devourer. And he says very specifically, if I can't get your money, I don't have your heart. But if I can get your heart, if, I can, if you can trust me enough to give me the first tenth, I will open the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing. And I'll rebuke that old curse, that old devil, that old slew foot off of your life. I'll rebuke the devourer for you. He will not destroy your fruit of the ground, nor will your vine in the field cast its grapes says the Lord of hosts. Watch this, the next verse. All the nations will call you blessed and you'll be a delightful land. The whole point of the blessing is to be a blessing to somebody else. The whole point, he wants to bless us. He wants to open the window. He wants to break the curse. Why? All the nations will, people around you, your friends, your neighbors, you say, why are you so blessed? Let me tell you about my God. Let me tell you about Jesus. Let me tell you about the decisions that I made. Folks, it comes down to decision making. Your decision, my decisions, they're not inconsequential. They're very important. Decisions, your choices are going to put you on this side of the tree or this side of the tree. Every day. It's not a one-time decision. I got to follow through. Paul said, I buffet my body and make it my slave, lest after I've preached to others, I myself should be disqualified. And then before he died, he says, I fought the good fight. I finished the course. I kept the faith. He was patting himself on the back. He said, lest I be disqualified after I preach. You mean you could, you could mess up? Yeah, any of us can mess up. I love what Billy Graham said to a couple of pastors in our association that went and visited him when he was over 90. I think he was 92. And they went to visit Billy Graham, and they had some time talking with him. And before they left, they said, Mr. Graham, would you pray for us? And he said, under one condition. I said, what's that? He said, if you'll pray for me. And, and they thought, pray for Billy Graham? Hi. And he said, Mr. Graham, what would you like us to pray for? And he said, pray that I would finish strong. What? You're 92 years old. He knew he had to keep fighting to the end. And you got to keep fighting. To, you can't quit. 92. And he said, pray that I finish strong. I read a book one time called God's Generals. And it talks about these great men and women of God. And I was amazed how they didn't pull any punches, but they talked about many of these people that God used mightily, miraculous, signs and wonders. To in the end of their life, they became shipwrecked. They got really messed up and did goofy and crazy things. Anybody can fall at any time. You can't just camp on the fact that you were good last year. You got to get up and be good every day. You got to get up every day and serve the Lord. You got to make good decisions every day. You got to resist evil every day and draw to good every day. That's why you need to have a good company of friends around you who when you start to slow down they go hey what's the matter hey come on come on come on get up let's go let's go let's keep going yeah i'm gonna make it to the end let's live the blessed life let's be a delightful land that people can come eat the fruit of the holy spirit off of our life blessed to be a blessing be all that you can be be blessed did anybody get anything out of this today I got a very important question for you, and that is this. If you died tonight, would you go to heaven? If you died tonight, would you go to heaven? You might be watching online. If you died tonight, would you go to heaven? Most important question anybody could ever ask you. You might be here and you say, Pastor, I hope so. I think so. I'm really not sure. I mean, does anybody really, does anybody know? Yeah. The Bible says, I've written to you, little children, that you may know that you have eternal life. You need to know that you have eternal life. How do you get eternal life? A man named Nicodemus asked Jesus that. And here's what Jesus said. He said, you must be born again. Going to church doesn't make you a Christian. Having Christian parents doesn't make you a Christian. Owning a Bible doesn't make you a Christian. You must be born again. What does that mean? That means there comes a time in your life. By an act of your free will, you surrender your life to Christ. You ask him to forgive your sins. He comes. He lives on the inside of you. He makes you into a new person. That's what you need. That's what I need. That's what all of us need. If you've never done that or you're not sure if you've ever done that, that's why you're here today or that's why you're watching. And in a moment, I'm going to lead you in a prayer. You're going to surrender your life to Christ. He's going to meet you right where you're at. Forgive all your sins and make you into a new person. But you might be here today and you say, Pastor, I did that in the past, but today I'm not where I want to be with God and I want to get back on track with God. Every head bowed, every eye closed. 
I want to ask you if either one of those apply to you. And today, you want to get right with God. You want to get back on track. Or you want to be sure if you died tonight, you'd go to heaven. Slip up your hand right where you're at and say, that's me. Pray for me. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Thank you. Anybody else? Thank you. Put your hands down. Everybody pray with them. Let's pray this prayer. Dear Jesus, I believe you're the son of God. You died on a cross for my sins. God raised you from the dead. I'm a sinner. I need a savior. I can't save myself. Dear Jesus, please forgive all my sins. Come live on the inside of me. Make me into a new person. Wherever you lead me, I'll follow. From this day and forevermore. Right now, I'm born again. I'm saved. I'm a Christian. I'm going to heaven. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus is my Lord. Give the Lord praise. People prayed that prayer, meant business with God. Friend, if you prayed that prayer, the first thing you need to do is find a good church. If you're here, you've already found it. If you're watching online, let us know. If you're not in this area, we'll help you find a good church. And I want to send you some materials in the mail. If you check the box on the connection card, or you can do it online, let me know you made a decision to follow Christ. I have some special materials that help people get started in their Christian life. I'd be happy to send that to you free of charge. I believe God's going to take you places you never dreamed of. Welcome Pastor Mike as he comes today to close out the service for us. Come on, give Pastor Bill a bigger hand than you gave me. Come on, give him a band. I'm loving this series, y'all. I'm loving it. Well, now we have an opportunity to fund the ministry of Victory Church. And listen, uh, if you are new to our church today, please don't feel any pressure to give in the offering. Those who call Victory Church home, we take it upon ourselves to fund the mission and the vision of the church. And our mission is simple. Win souls, make disciples, because that's what Jesus commanded us to do. But what does that look like? It looks like helping people know God, get victory in every area of life, discover purpose, and make a difference with our gifts. Oh, I love it so much. And we get to fund that together as a church family. And the scripture that God laid on my heart is my favorite scripture on generosity. That's one of our core values is generosity. If you, anyone asks, Pastor Mike, what's your favorite scripture on giving and generosity? It's this one. John 3.16, for God so loved the world that he gave. That's, oh man. He gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. You are never more like God than when you give. That's part of God's nature. Moved by love and compassion for all of us, he gave his one and only son. Praise God. There are a few ways that you can give, and it'll be up on the screen or an offering envelope on the seat in front of you if you want to partner with us. There's an offering box on the hallway on the way out. Um, let's pray over this offering. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for the opportunity to give good seed and a good soil. We pray that you'd bless these gifts and let, let them do abundantly more we ever think or imagining of winning souls, making disciples, and bringing glory to your name. And I pray, Lord, bless everyone who's giving a hundredfold blessing in return in this life and the age to come, eternal life, because that's what you promise your disciples. And I pray, Lord, for everyone who's here and everyone who's watching online. I pray your blessing over them, your protection over them, your favor over them this week. I pray wisdom to their hearts and minds, good health to their bodies in Jesus' name. And I pray, Lord, for every one of us, let us be your hands and feet this week. Lead us to people that we can be a blessing to, that we can encourage and pray for, that we'd lay hands on the sick and see them recover, that we see miracles happen in your name, and that we'd lead someone to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ, we pray. In the name of Jesus, amen. Amen, amen. Thank you, everyone, for worshiping with us. I want to look into the camera and thank our online family for joining us as well. Would you like, subscribe, and follow us on these social media accounts? Share this message with someone. If it bless you, we know it's going to bless someone else too. God bless you. We're going to sign off now. Victory Church, we say goodbye to our online family. We love you guys.